get that way. I feel that way. So what do I do? I fan the flame. Come on. You understand? It says, but ye, brethren, be not weary of well-doing. You see, when you start getting weary of well-doing, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You need to say, okay, God, well, something's going on in my life that, that I need to deal with. It, it could be issues by my emotions. It could be something that I've got to deal with. i got to take to the altar. Hello. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. So let's guard that fire and not let anything blow it out. From sin. See, we got to guard it from sin. Because sin will allow that fire to burn out. we got to guard it from distractions. We must be reverence for the Holy Spirit. Live a life of continual sacrifice. Do you understand? Of continual sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So let's just start with prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, your spirit is upon everyone in here. Thank you for your presence, your love, your healing power, your spirit of revelation is coming upon the hearts and the minds. We thank you for what you're doing here today, Lord. We thank you for what you're shifting in our hearts and guiding us and wrapping your arms around us during this time. So we thank you for your word says, blessed are those who mourn, or they shall be come. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, a message like today would be a message of, uh, let's just talk about suffering, and let's just talk about, uh, well, how do we get through all this? Uh, things like that. Uh, I'm really going to bring a message, a mix of that, uh, with perseverance, is the key thing and part of it. But, before I get into all of that, uh, I really felt the Lord wanted me to start with a parable. And uh, everything begins with this. And it'll help you kind of understand where to move from here. So if you'll follow me, we'll go to uh, the book of Mark. And in the book of Mark, we're going to go to the chapter 4. And in chapter 4, We'll start from the beginning. Now we're going to skip to uh, verse 18, where it starts with the parable of the soul. So Mark 4, 18. Is it 18? No, I'm sorry, that's 13. It says, then he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Did I go too far? Yes, I did. Sorry, no. Let's back up all the way to the beginning of 4, verse 1. Because I want to read the whole parable. I want you to get it. So again, verse 1 of chapter 4. Again, he began to teach by the seaside. A large crowd was gathered before him. So that he entered a boat and he sat on the sea. And the whole crowd was by the sea and the land. And he taught them many things in parables. And said to them in his teaching, Listen, and take note. A sower went out to sow. He sowed, he sowed, and some seed fell behind the path, beside the path. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some seed fell on the rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and soon it sprang up. But it did not have deep soil. But when the sun rose, it was scorched. 
So I didn't have deep soil, so when the sun rose, it got scorched. And because it had, because why? Because it had no root. It withered away. Other seed fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no grain. And the other seed fell on good ground. And it yielded grain that sprang up and increased by 30, 60, or 100 times as much. And then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let them hear. So we continue, which is very interesting to me, was as we go into when he was alone, those who were around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. He said to them, To you it is given the secret of the kingdom of God. To all of you right here is given the secret of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, everything is said in parables. Why? So seeing they may not see and not perceive, and hearing they may not hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sight be forgiven them. Their sins be forgiven. And now actually, if we looked at that verse in that section right there, they came all the way from Isaiah 6. And Isaiah 6 goes all the way back to where, it, where Isaiah is standing there before the Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, where the cherubims and angels are on all high. That place in the kingdom of God. And then he says, who shall I send? And Isaiah said, send me. But I won't get too far into that because I don't get distracted on that. So, it goes here. Now, and now it explains. Then he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Right there. And not understand them. How then will you understand all the parables if you don't understand this parable? This parable is paramount to so much. So much of the other parables, so much of the things that Jesus is teaching, paramount to so many other things. That's why he's emphasizing this parable right here, the four soils, to understand it. Have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So it continues in explaining it. The sower sows the word. The sower is God. These are those, uh, those are those. Uh, the sower sows the word. These are those beside the path where the word is sown. But when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word which is sown in their hearts. Otherwise, likewise, are seeds sown on rocky ground, who, when they bear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, but have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. After a while, afterward, while affliction or persecution rises for the word's sake, immediately they fall away. And others are seeds sown by thorns, the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world, and the deceitful of riches, and the desires of other things, entering in it, choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Still others are seeds sown on good ground, and those who hear the word and receive it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold as much. Amen. So, if you will, I am asking for a visual age. And I ask for your assistance, somebody to come up, people to come up with me. Now, all I ask for you, you don't have to say anything, do anything, just need to stand there. But I want 12 people. So, 12 people will come on up here and stand up here. I just want to do the visual aid. Come on up. Just, you just have to stand. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do any foolish. Nothing, nothing to embarrass yourself. Nothing like that. So just come on up here, 12 people. And then I want you to uh, gather in groups of threes. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. Have groups of threes. Or four groups of three. One, two, three. One, two. We need another one over here. And I need three more. Three more. Four groups of three. One, two, three.
three and a fourth group. Come on up. Don't be afraid. You can stand there. Holy Spirit, work on the back. <laughs> four. You two get together and grab one more person. One more person then you join them. Okay, so you got three there. You got three there. You got three here and then one more over here. There you go. Come on up. Okay, so you're probably going to have to scan, pan me or whatever. It doesn't matter. But, but, so we have, what do we have? We have 12 people here, right? 12 people. This parable is, is the, the eyes to see, the ears to hear. And one of what Jesus is saying here. Right? We all come together to learn and, and grow from Jesus, right? We all learn to be sheep and, and take and receive what he has, right? So take none of this uh, personal, okay? So we're going to break it down. So here's the first group, right? This is the seed that's sown on hard path, right? And the hard path, and then the Satan came. You, you heard the word, but it didn't take any root at all. It didn't get anywhere, it just kind of whatever sounds nice. And, 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 and nothing happened, right? So just kind of moved just a little bit right there. Right there. So, so that was the seed that fell on the hard path. It's already gone away. So here's the next next soil, right? This is the rocky soil. This is the rocky soil where you begin to say yes to Jesus. You receive Him. And now you're sitting here, you've made that commitment to Him. You said, okay, I'm going to make a commitment to Jesus, right? And yet you read a little bit, you've gone to church, or you just go for the entertainment, whatever. But, you, but your roots never get deep. You never get deep in the Lord. And so, here we are, believers. But you reach, reach to get, you grow up, but the sun came and scorched you. And you withered away. So go ahead and stand right over there. Now we have the third group, right? Third group is where the thorns were. You're hearing the word. You're starting to get your roots get down there. You're in grief, right? Your roots are getting down there, and you're growing. You're getting water. You're reading the word. You're studying, right? But all of a sudden, there's some other doctrine that comes in, some other teachings, the other worries of the world, whether it be about your finances, whether it be about your health, whether it be about things that are coming up and coming around you in your life, right? Whether or not you really can stand faithful for these things that happen. So all these different doctrines, all these different teachings come in and start choking. The word choking that up. And all of a sudden you get choked up. So now go ahead and stand over there. Now we have the good soil. Right? <laughs> Yay! Now in the good soil, what? We have 30, 60, 100 people. So out of all of these 12 people who are standing up here, who gets into the good soil? And then again, we have 30. Go ahead and step over there. You're a good soul, but only 33. 30%. 30%. And then you're 60%. Doing good. You got that. You're in that good soil. But 60%. And then 100%. And then 100%, but 100 full. 100 full. Right? One person. A whole pair of 100 full people. Made it to 100 full. This is what Jesus is talking about. This is what he's talking about. Where are you in your relationship with him? That's everything that comes at you. Everything is hitting you. All the worries, your finances. See, this parable right here also works with tithing. So you know you're blessed to be blessed, to walk in prosperity. But you're, you're, you look at the bills. You look at the air conditioning here, the heater, the air conditioning up here, you look, the air conditioning goes there. You look at that. Why is a Christian a believer who's supposed to be in a hundredfold? Or in their sixties, great, but a hundredfold. Why is all this hitting? What are all the things that are coming at you in different angles in your life? So this parable works with the tithing. So you know that that you know that that ten percent is important. So you, so you know that you need to tithe. But amongst all the things that come against that, you pull, you pull back. Or you have an unction to be generous. God sees a generous giver. So you have that leading in your spirit to give, be generous, and help somebody out, pay some bills off, help them pay off a car, whatever whatever you can afford. Go buy a lunch. You have that unction in you, but you pull back. you got to trust in the Lord. 
to know that he's got you. Right? To walk through that. So, so tithing, generosity, and order. And then when you break through, when you start to understand all that, then you step into here, and then you step into here, and then you get over to here. Because now you've broken through. Because it's about breakthrough. It's about overcoming. And it takes work. It takes a walk to get there, right? And so that's what we do as brothers and sisters of Christ, as children of God. It also works with hearing God. Hearing the voice of God. We want to hear God so much. We want to hear His voice. We want to hear His tender love. We want to, we want to receive His guidance and His leading. Same parable for hearing the voice of God. Are you going to let the noises of the world come in and, and hold you down? Or you think, oh, well, it would be nice to hear God, right? Over here, the hard path. But God doesn't speak to anybody. Right? There's no way He speaks to people. That would need to be too busy. Sure, maybe He created the world. Maybe He exists. He doesn't speak to anybody. There they are, stuck over there. Hard path. But God, His word says, My sheep hear my voice. So that we start moving over here. Okay, maybe I can hear. Maybe I can. But the things of life, the things you worry about, the noises, oh, I missed it. Or maybe it wasn't. Or I thought I heard the voice, but then I can't hear the voice. Maybe I'm seeing something, but uh, maybe that was an angel. I don't know. So these are all things as we step through this in terms of hearing God and trusting His voice. And as we renew the Word and, and know the Word, we get over here to 100 fold, and we start to realize and we're starting to hear Him as we know the Word, renew our mind, and know what is truth and what is lies. We begin to see, okay, that's the Lord speaking to me. Because I know Him. I know His Word. I know what He's doing. So we get over here. So again, we take this to every circumstance we have in our life to be victorious and strong. Alright? You guys can go sit down. I'm going to stand up here the whole time. <laughs> Now the key thing to understand in this parable, through all of this, is the soil represents your heart. That's what the soil is, your heart. And all amongst all these obstacles, amongst all these things that we have that come against us, do we know, without a doubt, that God loves us? Are we trusting Him when it says to trust Him through it all? Does He love? So I just want you guys to say right now, God loves me. God loves me. He really does. Say, I, he really does love me. Knowing that God loves you, and knowing that you're highly valued, knowing that, that He is moving heaven and earth for you, knowing that He cares for you, that's how we get through all this. It's knowing that God loves you, no matter what the what circumstances are. So let me just short prayer before I continue on. So Father, we just thank you for your word that goes forth in our hearts right now. We thank you that all the strongholds are being broken down right now. We thank you your love is breaking through to good soil. We thank you, Lord, that you are taking all the hard places of our hearts and replacing them with flesh. We thank you that we begin to trust you in all of this, in all the wants, and all the confusion. But we know that we can trust you in all of it. We know that we can walk through this in your understanding and in your love. In Jesus' name. So, with that ground broken, plowed out, your rocks taken out, thorns, well, we have burnt those, burnt those in the fire. We can begin to now step into the ominous song. You know, when, when all this happened with Flo, uh, Psalm 91 kept coming back in my face. I know when this pandemic started, Psalm 91 was one we went right to and grabbed hold of it and we read it. So let's not shy away from it. Let's not run from it. Let's go right to it. 
And I know you guys read it over and over, but we're just going to read it today. I'll let the Lord work in our hearts right now. <clears throat> so, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's the Father speaking to you. Verse 1 is the Father speaking to you. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, Jesus, now you say, this is your response to that. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen. And then Jesus says, Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall find protection. His faithfulness shall be your shield and wall. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that pursues in darkness, nor the destruction that strikes at noonday. A thousand may fall on your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High your dwelling. There shall be no evil fall before befall you, Amen. neither shall any plague come near your tent. For he shall give his angels charge over you, Amen. to charge you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent, and then and shall trample underfoot. Because, because why? Because He has set His love upon me, because we have set our love upon Him, there I will deliver Him. I will set Him on high, because He has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer. I will be with Him in trouble. I will deliver Him and honor Him. With long life I will satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. Amen. That's our God who loves us so much. And I struggled with the idea of what happened with Flo. I could rationalize other things. I could, I could rationalize other things, but I know Him. I know the love of God He has. I know the Word that's in Him. I know Him. I met Him six years ago, and we've been friends ever since. One of my good, crazy friends, Jesus. And of all the things, of all the things that take about COVID, I mean, that's just an insult. So many better ways, right? But COVID, that's an insult. So, Then we sit here and look at the word because the word doesn't lie. There's no faults in the word. There's no lie in the word. You know the word is a word. The word of God. So when we read this, we start to sit back and realize, wait a minute. Okay. I have my faith. My faith in Jesus Christ, that I know I am saved. I know that that salvation is there. I know in my heart I am safe, I'm provided for, and I'm highly valued. Amen. I know that. But you have to sit back and realize there is spiritual warfare out there. Okay. And we as a body of Christ come together to strengthen one another, encourage one another in the unity of one spirit, the Holy Spirit. So we can, we can get caught up in the wise. We can get caught up in the pit. And it's difficult. Now, what I'm saying is this, just, like, just like Wally said, we're still in a time of mourning. Alright? And so... More. I get it. I'm born in two. 
It's hard to look at that picture. But I promise. But let this be a flood in the valley of death. All right? Let this be a flood to remind you. You know, in flying, I'm, I'm learning how to get my, my <coughs> pilot license. And the instructor teaches me a lot of things. And one of the things is when, uh, when we're doing navigation, like we get lost. We're lost. Don't know where we are. We have to stop. We have to, I have to circle. So I need to circle around. You stay in the spot here. I got to figure out my bearings, where I'm at, trying to find the navigational skills to, to, to pinpoint where I am. And once I figure out where I am, then I say, okay, I'm going to divert here. And so now I need to recalculate the time. And the reason we have to calculate time with this is because we've got to make sure we have enough fuel to get there because, you know, we just need to make sure we can get where we need to go because we don't know where, how far off we are. And when we do that diversion, we have to put a fence. Okay, so this is where I need to go, but if I go this far, then I've gone way too far and that's the part of this part. So that's the same thing I want you to do, is put that flag down or the same thing. There's a, a time and place for warning, and it's, it's important to do that, right? But there comes a time where you gotta keep, you gotta step up and move. And that's gonna be, what we're leading into. Okay? So, let's start there. <clears throat> um, here's one thing we, we all need to realize is we all pray for God. We poured everything. We prayed, we prayed, we gave it our all. And did everything that we know and, and led in our spirit to do. Number one thing to realize is your prayers for healing, God answered. Because He's healed. Okay. There is no sickness in Jesus in heaven. He's healed. And just like I said right at the end, with long life I will satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. He's saved and He has eternal life. It's done. That part's done, right? So that part of your prayers is answered. God heard. The rest, we don't know. Right? And again, we can't get too much in the waters. But let's, let's, let's get to a place where we begin to say, okay, with all the spiritual warfare out there, with all the things that are coming against us, we know the love of God. We know the peace of God. We know all the things that are for us. How do we continue through this without getting hammered, without getting held down, without getting limited, without getting oppressed, without getting to a place of suicide, getting to a place of hopelessness, getting to a place because hope is deferred makes a heart sick. And I look at hearts all day long, so I see them. Hey, wait. So that part we know. So again, during. Um, so let's just look at a few verses. So John, in the book of John, so go with me. I like people to go with me. Uh, I like people to lead me into the Bible because something about going to that Word, looking at it, and just reading it, and you're staring at it, it's just the Holy Spirit touches you. So we're in the book of John, in chapter 11, and in verse 25 and 26. This was said before, but it's an important one at this time. So, John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Amen. And whoever lives and believes in me shall <coughs> never die. Amen. And the infamous question, do you believe this? Amen. Right here. The mouth we confess, the heart we believe. And then, could jump over to John 6. Excuse me, I'm sorry. John 16, verse 1 through 4. John 16, verse 1 through 4. It says, I have spoken these things to you 
so that you will not fall away. But will put you out, and they will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time has come that whoever that whoever kills you will think he is he is, it is an offering of service to God. They will do these things to you because they have not known the Father nor me. I have told you these things so that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not tell you these things at the beginning because I was with you. So I was reminding you that you're in spiritual warfare. Because those people that are, that, that are thinking they're doing it for God, they're doing it for the God of hell. They're allowing, they've given themselves over to Satan, into their, their religious thinking, they've given themselves over to, into, the, into his lies and deception, and they're killing. Right? So we realize there's spiritual warfare out there. That's why we need to get our roots very deep and get the rocks out. Right? So, John 21. 21. And again, I say this because going back to Psalm 91, I sat there and I had to sit back going, okay. Because really, the, the people who benefit Psalm 91 is a small percentage. And I had to question myself, am I in that percentage? What kind of pride and arrogance have I been walking? Have I been? What errors do I need to check myself, judge myself? What errors? Am I still in the flesh? What errors? And, and of course, I don't know what the will of God is. I haven't told when my, my last day is. Yeah, those. All these little things are going on. So I've got to constantly judge myself. So then we look at John 21. Are we all there? John 21. Verse, 21, uh, verse 22 and 23. Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? What is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that his disciples would not die. Jesus, Jesus didn't say to him, that he would not die. But if he, if that he remained till Jesus came back, what is that to you? What is that to you? So, here are the things and a example. There is many, right? So this is took up one little aspect of are we in the spirit? Are we in the flesh? And I, I just, I felt in my heart that I really needed, that this is what the Lord wants you to have the tools to really break through this and to help others. This is Restoration Church. Pissed off the devil. Pissed off the devil. And the devil's going to pay back step full for what he did here. Restoration, Restoration Church is going to rise. Restoration Church is going to come to that place of strength and be able to help so much more people. Amen. So this is your role. This is your place. This is the strength that God has put in you. So, Romans. Go to Romans chapter 7, verse 8 for me. Now, I'm reading in, in a modern English version here. So it has a little bit different. But uh, one thing I want to take a look at. We get in the flesh, right? It's even in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not cover. Right? Thou shalt not cover any other properties. Thou shalt not cover a wife. Right? We shall not cover. So let's take a look at that, because I was just praying this morning, and the Lord was showing me about covenants and my relationship and my, and, and my difficulties with losing blood. Right? And many times, we lose something. We lose someone very important to us. We lose someone we love dearly. We don't want to lose. We don't. I get it. I don't want to lose it either. But it's that place where we step in that place of covetousness. And Romans chapter 7 is talking about flesh. And it says, verse 8, But sin, taking op opportunity, sin, taking opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covenant. 
For apart from the law, sin is dead. So, what this is talking about, because in the next chapter, Romans 8, is all about walking in the Spirit. I'm not led. <clears throat> so, are you in the Spirit? Or are you in the flesh? And you're dealing with these. Are you walking through these things? Are there things in your heart and you're thinking of all these attacks that come on you? Are you in the Spirit or are you in the flesh? These are the things God is warning you to keep yourself protected. Because Satan will use all kinds of avenues to start working havoc in your life, in your walk. You want to get to the good soil. And you do that by trusting God, loving Him, and knowing He's going to take you through this. And always be evaluating yourself. Am I in the flesh? Am I in the spirit? This is a crucial time. That's why I'm here. This is a crucial time. This is a crucial time to say, I'm not going to let myself get in the flesh in this. Because the devil will work havoc. People would even commit suicide during this time. This is how serious these times are. So we rebuke the spirit of Satan. We rebuke the spirit of a suicide. Okay, so that's one of the examples, right? The covenant. So we got to hold on to something. We got to have it. Okay, so now we look at this. So you'll judge yourself. You pay attention to where you're going, what that's doing. You're going to get in that good soil. These are all these different ways in which we we're judging ourselves. So we always stay in the spirit of this. Now, why? Why? Why, 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 why? Just to be in peace, just to be in love, just to get our salvation into heaven. All this stuff. Why do we work so hard at this? Why Why do we need to worry so much? Why can't I just take my salvation? Why can't I get a decent life and, and, then, and then get through this and then get on to heaven where I have my mansion, I have all this good stuff, I can sit there in the throne room and worship all day long? Why? Okay, turn to me. Psalm. Uh, I want to go to. Uh, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, why did I put this here? Oh, I'll just read it. Uh, Matthew 26 56 is, but all this was done in the scriptures of the prophets. Now, this is talking about. Uh, well, Matthew 26 is where, uh, where the, uh, the guards came to pick up Jesus. Right? And they picked up Jesus, and they took him away, and at that moment, all the disciples forsook him and fled. Right? It's a difficult time. It's a difficult time when someone you've been trusting in, someone you've been following, someone who, who's been teaching you and mentoring you and guiding you, and one you trust in, and, and you don't understand why, what just happened, with everything he's taught you. He's sown so much into you. He has sown the word. He's sown his life. He's sown his love. Oh boy, did that man love. And so this is, this is not a time to get mad and blame God and run away. Right? But it, it, it's, it, it's, it's typical. It's that place of hopelessness that, that we just let the flesh spin over and take us over. So we're not going to do that. Okay, so now Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 16. Psalm 139, 16. Before you were born. Oh, I'm read. I want to speak. Psalm 139, verse 16. Your eyes saw me unformed, yet in your book all my days were written, before any of them came into being. Your book's already written. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, your book, your life, what he created you to accomplish, was already written. 
you have a plan of purpose that he's already prepared for you to fulfill and to walk in. But the free will you have is, is difficult to work with. The love of God gave you free will. Are you going to diligently seek him and know him and know his plan for your life? Or are you going to get into uh, selfish ambition? Or are you going to get off on things that aren't God but your flesh determining what you want to do? Are you going to stay in your soul? You can do a lot of things with soul power, right? The Tower of Babel. They all got together in their soul power and they built the Tower of Babel. We can accomplish things and we can say, you know, we can say whatever that accomplishment means. But are we going to be unified in the power of the Spirit? For you. So knowing that you were created for a purpose to accomplish, and so does Satan. Satan knows you're created for a purpose. Created, you're created to do things and release the blessings and the good deeds of God. So the demonic world is very active against the kingdom of God. And as we begin to walk and know our authority and our identity and who we are in Christ Jesus, and begin to judge ourselves, making sure that we're following Him. So a lot of times the statement is the fear of the Lord. People have difficulty with the fear of the Lord. And I know love conquers all fear. The love of God sets us free. The love never fails. But at the same time, we must have that ominous, reverential power of fear of God. Knowing that He set things up for us to be prosperous, set things up to be victorious in exactly what He's written for us to do. And we are the body of Christ, so everybody else, every has a certain plan and purpose to fulfill. So all of hell comes against you. The more you influence people, the more you step into places of leadership, the more of hell comes against you. See, our government, the Lord says, pray for our government. Why? Because they're over people. And if the enemy wants us to affect people, then he's going to go and affect the people that are over those people. Manipulating them. Speaking lies to them. Getting them to believe a false truth in their head. Through their soul, because the enemy comes to the soul. You can't touch your born again spirit. You can't touch them. But he can come through your soul. So these are the things that strengthen us as a body of Christ as we come together in unity. So, uh, so let's look to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Are we doing good? Okay. Okay, so uh, I want to go to Philippians chapter 1. I want to go to verse 27. Go to verse 27. Prior to this, Paul is talking about do I go or do I stay? And I won't get too far into that. I just want to get right to verse 27. Verse 27, it says, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. That whether or not I come and see you, I may hear of your activities. Well, Flo is part of the a part of the cloud of witnesses. Right? And he is praying for you guys. He is looking down. Love him. Right from there. So he says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, that whether or not I come and see you, I may hear of your activities, that you are standing fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Do not be frightened by your adversaries. I'll just stop there. So that's where we are at in Restoration Church. Learning and growing and taking that step forward into the next level the next level of understanding. That there is a seriousness to the warfare 
that's out there that took down our pastor. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. Right? So how do we come together even stronger in unity and make sure that doesn't happen to the rest of us? Make sure that we are fulfilling our destiny and our purpose. No more can we play church. And Flo didn't play church. I'm just saying, no more can we play church. Right? So, with this, with that knowledge, and the stirring up in your spirit of strength that's coming upon you right now, I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit for more. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, I just ask you to bring forth a greater level of revelation right now on everybody's hearts. Bring revelation, bring wisdom right now. I just want you to impart with the hearts are already open to you, open to your mightiness, open up to your truth. We thank you, Lord, that you are bringing the wisdom and revelation to them right now. We thank you that healing is even, the power of healing is coming right now in the name of Jesus. The power of healing is coming right now. Is anybody needing any healing right now? If you need any healing, just lift up your hand. Is there something you need healing for? Lift up your hand and receive it. Father, we just thank you right now that that healing presence is going right now. It's touching them, touching their body, touching them, and taking away all that pain and bringing order to their body right now. Lord. We thank you that your power and presence right now we, we come against every demonic spirit that's attacking and speaking to anyone that's in here right now. We command you to get out in the name of Jesus. We drive you out, Satan. We drive you out. We demand you to get out of this congregation. Get out of their lives and you will not torment. I just, I just scatter the walls of this, this church with the blood of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, that your fire is here right now. Everything is hindering and harming here. I command you to leave right now. And I thank you, Lord, that their, 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 their minds and their hearts are held tight and, and, and open to you and your truth right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that, that strength is coming to their bones, strength is coming to their spirit, and strength. And, I, and, and in Jesus' name. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, this message, I want you to hold tight to your heart right now. Because you're going to use it more and more in the coming days. You're in a time of mourning, in a time of receiving comfort right now. And the Lord is strengthening. He is bringing wisdom to you. He is pulling you through all of this. And He's going to bring it to a great glorious time. Don't forget. And there's so much more He's going to show you. He's even teaching you things right now. So I, I wanted to end. I wanted to end with this. Um, You will be doing this. Some of you, you need to be doing it now. It doesn't matter. Right now, I, I want you to know you'll be doing this. Acts, go with me. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 9. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 9. So this is Peter and John. The resurrection of Jesus, 40 days, understanding the kingdom of God. Jesus taught 40 days after he was resurrected on what? The kingdom of God. Received the baptism. All right. And so now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour. 
and a certain man from his mother's womb was lame. From his mother's womb, born lame. And uh, was born lame from his mother's womb was carried. When they laid, they laid, and they laid him daily at that gate, the temple, which is called Beauty, to ask alms for those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixed his eyes on him. And fixing his eyes on him, John and Peter, looking straight at that man who's down there lame. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have to give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk, and know the joy of the Lord is upon you. Rise up and step into the deliverance, step into the power, step into the place of victory and overcoming. We are all subjected to this. We're in this world of molasses, if you will, that we must learn what it takes to overcome. And keeping our eyes on Jesus at every moment, every aspect, and, and when we need to repent, repent. Don't forget to repent. Some churches out there don't teach you to repent. But repent. Repent all the time. I repent for unbelief. There's so many times I catch myself not in, that, in unbelief. Repent. And allow yourself to get back in line into His fall, loving arms. Just fall into His loving arms. And to let Him pull you through all of this. And He will. He will, He will, He will. Because there's so much attacks we don't understand. There's so much we don't understand. And there's, there's just, I just, that's why we continue to get to know Him and seek and ask for more wisdom, more wisdom, more wisdom. To get a crushing pride and arrogance every step of the way. Because there's so much more to know, so much more to see, so much more to hear, so much more to encounter. Yeah. And it's going to get good. I just heard a, a prophecy not too long ago uh, that somebody prophesied uh, from a whole other state that said that the power of God is going to come on Las Cruces. Of all places, Las Cruces. Yeah. And it's going to hit and it's going to go on each side of I 10. Power is coming here, y'all. And the spiritual warfare that's here is very intense. And Restoration Church is going to overcome that. We're going to strengthen from this one and get powerful, even more in the power and the wisdom and the revelation from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, that's it. That's enough for today. And, uh, I just want to end with prayer again. So, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be with you and to receive from you, Lord. To receive your impartation of this time right now that you are imparting onto each and every one of us a greater level of understanding. And to the ones, oh, to the ones that are here, the ones that are here, I receive right now. And we just thank you, Lord, that what they're receiving, they're going to be giving to others in this time. And knowing the beauty and love that you have for each and every one of us, strengthen us. So Holy Spirit, continue to do your good work until the day of second coming of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.